It's a lot of under teat, but I think I'm getting away with it. It's on backwards. I don't get this dress. One of my apples keeps rolling out of the bag. But I like the story it tells with the fringe. Oh, here we go. Hi, girls. It's a pleasure Hi. to talk to you. you Thank too. you. And I would like to know, what did you find on Paula Pelf's diaries to <laughs> get you up to wanting to make this film? A thing that's brought us joy for many years. She used to, was a writer at Saturday Night Live with us, and she would bring it out every now and then. And we, I had chunks of it memorized, you know, hearing about her love of Sylvester Stallone as a child, all this stuff. <laughs> um, and so when she had the idea to turn it into a movie, I was very much uh, on board to try to produce the movie with her and, and, and work on the script with her. And then Jason Moore, the director, came on and worked on the script with her. And then when we felt it was good enough, we sent it to Amy. Um, and it was amazing to have that Bible to look at. The diaries. Yes, the diary was the Bible of this film because Paula's character, who I was kind of playing a version of her, mm -hmm. You got you. I was able to just go, kind of go and look back and see what she was feeling, and her, she had mm -hmm. so many feelings. She had so <laughs> many feelings. You have so much to do. You have to invite that cute guy from down the street. Hi. Hi. I'm Mara. I'm James. I just wanted to say hi. So that's done. Oh. <laughs> the script was so beautiful and kind of learning that this really was her life, you know what I mean? She really had these journals and she had this relationship with her older sister who was kind of this cool rebel. It's so cool and it really like, it was just a very special feeling shooting it. And I knew that the girls were gonna be playing each other's sisters, which I really loved because they've never really had, as close as they are, they never really had the opportunity to do that. It's kind of like, it's kind of like the thing you wanna do with someone you're so close to, you know, of all the things you play, play, play someone's sister, which is just kind of, an inevitable place to go. It's great. I heard you were having a party from someone who got invited. It's pretty sad. It's a snazzy bell. Oh, thank you. Yeah, congrats on your wrestling championship. What are the difference between a female and a male-driven comedy? I think women are smarter than men. <laughs> so I think a female-driven comedy uh, is probably smarter. So now we're just getting to really, we're just uh, starting to see them be allowed to <laughs> <laughs> to shine, and we just need more of it. We need more movies like this, more female-driven comedies, um, because they're they're smart and they're funny and they're they're about like real things, real emotions. I think it depends on the movie. You know, I think that everybody's kind of concerned with this idea that there's this sort of like female comedy, male comedy. I I, I think it depends on whose whose voice it is. I remember when Bridesmaid came out, everyone said I didn't want to see it because I thought it was a movie for girls. And I was like. I never thought that people would think that. Like, didn't they watch us when we were on Saturday Night Live or did they like turn off the TV when the girls came on? Like, it's comedy. It's supposed to be funny. Did you fall on something short? Yeah. It's my ballerina music box. It really is a beautiful melody. And we're done. Nope.